Hi everyone, welcome to Baba Urban Farming Workshop. I'm Jess from Baba. So today, so before this workshop, Hans has shared with us how to how to how to treat the mealy bugs and what is the symptom that will ha will happen to will happen to spider mites. So today we will have the topic about how to reduce aphid in organic way at home. So do you notice some green or yellow tiny spot on your plants? Normally it will hide is it hidden behind the leaf or did your did your leaf suddenly turn into curly yeah so if you have facing this issue before then you have to stay tuned with us for our fb live workshop tonight and now welcome to click on the share button and share out our online workshop to all the gardening lover and before start i will have a quick introduction about baba and hans baba is a gardening accessory manufacturer from malaysia we continuously deliver quality, creative, and eco-friendly gardening products to garden, uh, to farmer and also gardener. We focus on developing eco-friendly products and promote organic farming. Planting in organic way is important to conserve our environment. We, also, we always share organic farming method with farmers and provide training to encourage farmer reduce the usage of toxic chemicals. By this, it is good to farmer and also reduce the agrochemical pollution. For home gardener, by using natural way to protect our garden is important too, because garden is one of the location where we relax our mind and enjoy family times. Through our sharing, we hope to make urban farming and gardening easier for everyone. For friends who just joined, previously we you, we have no more details about mini bugs and spider mites. Tonight, Hans will introduce another common pest that happened in the garden and also most of the farm. This is aphid. So later on, Hans will share on tips how to reduce aphid in your gardens. Have you clicked on the share button on your Facebook? If haven't, click now. Share our workshop tonight to all the gardening lover. After Hans sharing, we will have a Q&A Q &A section. You may write down your question in comment anytime and I will read out to Hans during Q&A section. Tonight, as usual, we will have Hans as our speaker. He graduated from Iowa State University of US with Bachelor Honor Degree of Agriculture and Biosystem Engineering. He has more than two years management experience in a 2,000 acres farm in US. He also been trained as organic farmer in Chixing Organic Farm in Taiwan. He been visiting to Malaysia farm and conduct research on organic farming in the past seven years. He continuously provide assistance and consultation to local farmer who like to convert to organic farming. And he is familiar with organic and non-pesticide farming practice. So now let's don't forget to click on the share button to share our FB live tonight. And then now let's welcome Hans Leong. Hello. Hello, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm Hans. Yes. Okay, we meet again here. We're really happy to see you again here. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, you spend your time here uh, to with us to learn about the topics today together. Today, we would like to talk about how to reduce effort in organic way at home. So, uh, the topics here the can you you can see the keywords here. We talk about effort and also at home so we will introduce a method that could be uh, easily applied at home but however if you really want to apply in farm large scale farming is uh, is feasible and applicable too some people may not know uh, what is effort but you may encounter these symptoms before so let's see have you ever seen have a face these problems so something like this. Have you ever seen something like lice, okay? At the back of the leaves, okay? And they, these kind of pests always group together. And they always appear on flower buds, leaf petiole, or at the back of the leaves. And sometimes we will see there is a white objects at the side of those lices. We thought that it's a kind of pest too, but in fact, these white objects are the skin 
of the pest. These kind of pests will shed skin from time to time because they want to grow bigger and bigger and they will shed skin. As you can look from the video over here, this is how the these kind of pests shed their skin and they left over the white object behind and this is their skin. And after a while, you will see there is a dusty or moldy layer on leaves and fruits. And we continue, if we continue abandon it, the leaves will eventually become dry or curl. And why is the pest? We name it aphid, okay? There are more than 4,000 types of aphids throughout the world. It could be black in color, yellow in color, green, red, pink, and so on. But their body structure is almost the same. Uh, it's like over in shape and look like lysis uh, being hi uh, hidden at the back of the leaves. And why these kind of why the plants tend to be easily attacked by aphid? So according to research, if there is too much nitrogen content and content too high in the plant, it means that inside the plant there is too much juice. As we know that the pests they want to utilize the nitrogen as their protein synthesis in their body. And the calcium content is too low inside the plant. These will contribute to the thinner cell wall of the plant. If the cell wall is too thin, then the, the smell of the juice, the plant juice will tend to release faster and the pests will easily poke inside the plant and suck the juice out. And if it was a, it was a cloudy day, then the pests will come to here and then to hide under the plant too. What kind of eating habit of aphid is something like mosquito. They have nostrium or what they call the sucking straw. They poke the sucking straw inside the leaf and suck the juice out, just like the mosquito. And somehow, after a while, they will excrete some sweet urine. This is what they call dew, okay? D-E-W, dew. They will excrete sweet urine and this kind of sweet urine will always attract the ants and that's why the aphids are always accompanied by ants because the ants will bring back this sweet urine or the dew back to their nest and share with their colony. And that's why when this sweet urine they drop on the leaf surface. They drop on the fruit surface. This sweet structure will tend to attract more dust and more mold to grow on the leaves and fruits. So usually these kind of dust and mold, and mold is harmless, but they will cover uh, they will cover the leaves, they will cover the fruits and prevent it from being exposed by uh, to the sun and hinder it from carrying out photosynthesis. So, how the farmers and growers manage the aphids? The first choice will be usually chemical pesticide. So there are a lot of chemical pesticides that can be used to kill the aphids. It can be the contact basis, okay? The chemical, chemical pesticides on contact basis means that when we spray the pesticide, and touch the aphid's body and it will kill on contact. Translamina means that after we spray the pesticide on the leaf surface, the pesticide residue will tend to go through, penetrate the leaf surface and go to the back and, uh, and penetrate to the aphids, uh, the bodies of the aphids as well and also systemic pesticide, which means that when uh, we spray uh, the pesticide on the roots or we apply the pesticide on roots, the roots will absorb the pesticide into their body and when the pests suck the juice out, they will suck the poison all together. This is what they call the systemic pesticide. So the, co the common use pesticide in Malaysia and Singapore is organophosphorus pesticide, what we call OP pesticide. It's a contact-based and translaminal pesticide, for example, like malathion, 
505. Okay, according to research, for every time times increase in OP pesticide residue in parents' bodies, their kids will have 55 to 72 percent higher risk in getting ADHD and hyperactivity. So we never know that the user actually just want to use the poison, the toxin to kill the pest, but they never know that this will pass down to their kids and affects their kids as well. And the system in pesticide actually will, will contribute to uh, this, uh, many bees are dying, okay? Many bees are disappearing due to the poison, okay? When the bees, they go to, uh, they go to collect the pollen, from the flower, they collect the honey from the pollen. The pollen and the honey inside the flower contains this kind of systemic pesticide. And when the bees, they, they ingest, they eat this kind of pollen, okay, and also the honey, they will die. And of, even though these uh, chemical pesticides, there are many types of chemical pesticides can be used to kill the aphids, but FA is still a great problem for the farmers, okay? Just as I see from the Facebook comment, yes, the FA is a really great problem. Why? Because FA will actually bring about virus, which means that these FA, when they suck the juice out, they may suck the virus strain from the unhealthy plants and they fly or they go to another plant and suck the juice there at the same time, they will transmit the virus to that healthy plant as well. So they will become the carrier to transmit the virus from one plant to another plant. And this is how the papaya get the virus. This is what we call the papaya ring sprout virus. You can see the, uh, the leaves, the, there are yellow spots, uh, inconsistent yellow spots, and the most obvious symptoms is on the fruit. You can see there are some uh, real sign or the round sign on the fruits. This is what they call the papaya ring spot virus. And also the virus disease on long bean. And this is usually happen during the fruiting season of the long bean. So when the long bean start to get the long bean, the uh, start to fruit, okay, and it tends to attract the aphids and other pests to transmit the virus over there, okay? These virus are almost like the cancer, okay, for the plants. It's really uncurable, even until now, okay? So when the plants get virus, it really depends on the plant's self-protection system to see whether they have enough, okay, enough antibody to kill the plants or not. It depends on them already. And this one, that's why we would like to uh, teach in organic way, okay? And in the past, managing the aphids in organic way, in organic matter is very difficult. Why? Okay, especially when in the past, when we want to, uh, want to advise the farmers to convert into organic farming. And aphids is one of the very serious problems for them. Okay, so let, let us look on the body of the effie. So have you seen one small tube at the center and also two long tubes at the side here? So what are the tubes used? Okay, so the small tube at the center is the uh, organ to excrete the sweet urine. Just like I say, oh, the sweet urine will attract the ants, will drop on plants, to attract more moles and dust, okay? But the two tubes at the side will actually leak. You see the drops, the water droplets here? Actually, it's a smell. The smell of danger signal, okay, released by aphids to give signal to their friends to escape. So whenever they encounter something like nature enemies or they encounter toxic pesticide, they will firstly excrete this kind of smell and then to their friends and then to let them run away. And secondly, aphids can really reproduce at very, very fast rate, speedy rate. So uh, we, as we can see here, the aphids can reproduce through eggs or through what they call the pathogenesis. Later, we will explain that later on. So for sexual reproduction, 
okay, uh, for the pairs, uh, for the ethics want to reproduce by eggs, this one is really rare and only happen in the temperate climate, uh, climatic country, okay. These, uh, these ethics, the pairs cannot withstand cold temperature, they cannot withstand winter. So that's why they need to lay eggs, okay? B because the eggs can withstand the cold temperature, okay? And to overwinter, they need to reproduce by eggs. So you can see the male usually come, uh, uh, usually have wings and the female just stay over there and they start to reproduce at this moment. And during the normal period, the female can just clone themselves. The paternal gen genesis means that the pests can clone themselves without going through uh, sexual reproduction, without being laying eggs. So as you can see from the picture over here, okay, this one, the, the mom is laying the baby, but actually this baby is their clone. So if we name the F is as terminator, okay, so... This one is Terminator 1, this one is Terminator 2, and that one is Terminator 3. So every day, these uh, ethics can, uh, can produce 10 clones for themselves. And this one, I actually, this is under microscope I done by myself. And in the ma mother's body, you will see there are some red dots in their body. And this one is actually their child ready to being uh, to being born. So we can see the video over here. You see inside the mom's body, you see the red dots inside the body here and an uh, over structure inside here. These are the clothes ready to keep uh, to being born. Okay. And this is how Ephes uh, laying their child. You think that, oh, they are growing like growing babies like that and you can you imagine like one day they can produce 10 clones like these and after they produce 10 clones they can just like go out and find the foods and start to start to suck the plunges and so on <laughs> okay so if we abandon them abandon like that we don't care about them how many efforts can be reproduced after one week okay so just now i say that like one day uh it can produce 10 clones. So one week, okay, so for one individual can produce 10 clones and this 10 clones will eventually produce another 10 clones again and so on. So after a week, if we abandon them, it can repeat, it can reproduce up to 1 million aphids in a week. Last time, the spider mites, when we talk about how fast the spider mites reproduce, it can produce 1 million in a month. But F is 1 million in a week. So can you imagine how fast it can be reproduced? That's why when we use, sometimes we use the organic method. If we cannot kill them all at once, okay, then the, the remaining F is will just reproduce at faster rates. We do a short revision over here. The symptoms of F infestation include the F feet appear at the back of the leaves, on the leaf patures, on or on the flower buds, and mostly got the white shade skin at the side of the aphids, and the leaves become cool or dry, and there uh, there is a dusty and moldy layer on leaves and fruits, and sometimes the water disease do appear on plants, and when you see there are many ants crawling on the plant you need to look for whether there are aphids on the plant or not. It always accompanied by ants. And the challenges of managing the aphids, they can re reproduce at a very speedy rate, 10 clones per day. And it can release dangerous signal to the friends. <coughs> Excuse me. Release dangerous signal to the friends. And, to, and we should reduce the usage of chemical pesticides to protect yourself to protect your family and the beneficiary animals. So <coughs> let us come back to the main topic. Is there any organic way to reduce the effort? Yes. For management in small area, 
in small area. Okay, we need to trim away the stems, the leaves with a lot of aphids, okay? And we mop away the aphids nearby. And at the same time, we spray the oil type or the soap type organic pesticide on the plant. This will actually reduce very effectively, okay? But it, but uh, if providing that the area is really small, you can have time to do all these three steps together with care, okay? But if let's say we have a small garden, we have a large area planting, okay, for large area, these are the several ways we can manage the pest, the aphids organically. Firstly, we can grow beneficial plants, okay? And this plant is what we call Mexican butterfly weed. This should be able to find, uh, to be found in Malaysia and Singapore. But in Philippines, I'm not sure. You can try to source it and see. These Mexican butterfly we can attract the yellow aphids. Okay, so you can see there are a lot of <coughs> yellow aphids on plants over here, and no worries, these yellow aphids only suck the juice of this Mexican butterfly weed. It won't fly. It won't go to your uh your plants, go to your food crops. No worries, it can. It just only eats the Mexican butterfly weed, and because it attracts so many yellow aphids. And this will become a good food source of a kind of beneficial insects, and which what we call the ladybugs. Okay, you can see the ladybugs will come to here and eat those aphids over here. So when the ladybugs uh, is attracted, okay, and they decide to stay over here, they not only eat the aphids on Mexican butterfly weed. But they also eat aphids on other assisted on other plant crops. And secondly, we can adjust in providing the suitable nutrients for the plants. Just now we explained that why the why the plants tend to easily get attacked by aphids. We say that too high nitrogen content, too low in calcium content, and cloudy day. So that's why we can provide the nutrient which is high content in potassium and calcium instead. So for high potassium content nutrient, we can provide something like CV extract or uh, nutrient with high calcium content. We can find some foliar fertilizer that is high in calcium content. We can mix them both together and spray on plants to, supple uh, to supplement the potassium and calcium to the plants. And when we supply, when we supply uh, the potassium and calcium to the plant, it will start to activate the cell, the lignin, to become thicker. Okay, so when the cell cell wall become thicker, then when aphids they want to poke inside the plant, they found it's really hard to poke inside because it's so thick that, and they just don't want to stay there. Okay, and they make the skin of the leaves thicker too. So. As I said just now, when the skin of leaves become thick, okay, they don't like to stay over there. And the third way is with the help of organic pesticide, okay? And this emulsified sunflower is something that you can do yourself at home. We can source, we can find uh, sunflower oil, okay, mixed with uh, the saponin, okay, and mixed with water, okay? So the rate is something like this. Uh, eight millimeter, uh, eight milliliter, eight ml of sunflower oil mixed with one ml of saponin and mixed with forty ml of water. Okay, these are something that you can source pretty easily from online. Okay, so we mix them all together and then to be blended inside a small mixer for one minute, and you will have organic pesticide which is in total forty nine to fifty mils, uh, fifty mil. Then we further dilute it with water uh, with another 5 to 10 liters of water. So when we spray this kind of emulsified sunflower oil to the plant, to the pest, the oil, will, this kind of oil type pesticide will actually cover the nose, okay? Will cover the respiratory organ and then to let them suffocate until they die. Secondly, is we can find metahyzin and then sophile and Diatomaceous earth. These are something that you can find online as well. 
Metahyzer anisophily is a beneficial microbe, okay? It's a kind of microbe, something like uh, the lactobacillus, you know, the lactobacillus, the microbe. Okay, this is another kind of microbe. We call it metahyzium, okay? And you mix it with the artemisius earth. The metahyzium is something like the microbe, okay, that can infest the aphids, okay? You can see uh, it starts to go inside, penetrate the bodies of the aphids and let them die by absorbing the nutrients from their body. And there are several disadvantages by getting this. You need to find the fun fungi strain that is target-specific to aphids because metahyzium could be affected towards the, uh, the caterpillar, the plutella, could be affected towards the grasshopper, uh, could be too affected towards the aphids and so many things. So we need to find the fungi strain that is target-specific towards the aphid. You need to ask your supplier on whether, which kind of pest is being targeted, okay? <clears throat> and we need to soak this kind of material for 30 minutes to 2 hours before use to activate the microbe inside. And we need to avoid spraying under the hot sun. And for the diatomaceous earth, it's something like the, you know, the fossil, uh, the, the, the uh, something like a fossil, okay? They grind it, okay? And it becomes the powder, but inside this powder, each of the powder here is a mini glass structure that when the aphid, they pass by, they will break through their body and injure the aphid. But the disadvantage is it's only hurt. Sometimes the literate cannot be able to cope with the fast reproduction rate of the aphids. So that's why we need to mix them both together and then to make sure that it cut through the body, uh, the, the item the atomic cut through the body. At the same time, the metahyzium can infest the body, that can penetrate the body. Okay. And for uh for ourselves, we think that uh we can have a better innovation, we can have the better breakthrough to let everyone uh, manage the aphids much easier. Okay. The Mr. Gany Aphid Buster is a very highly effective organic pesticide towards aphid, okay? It's being made from plant extract. And then uh, this kind of plant is what they call the fibroidae. They extract uh, some uh, plant alkaloid inside uh, from the plants. After they spray these, before that, it's green in color. And after they spray, it's, being, it's become black in color. It becomes paralyzed and cannot, be, cannot move anymore. And how this kind of material works, okay, it actually affects the central nervous system of the aphids, okay, and it paralyzes the breathing muscle and also the other muscle. So as we know that the, uh, the insects, okay, the pests, the aphids, they breathing by open, there are two muscle. They open the muscle and close the muscle, okay, open and close, open and close. So after they spray, okay, the activity of the muscle, they cannot open and close anymore to start to breathe. Okay, they stay over there, paralyze the muscle. And that's why through this method, and uh, the aphids the start to suffocate. Okay? And how to use, okay, spray on the pest body and spray once a week. So if you know that, if you know that uh, these kind of plants will tend to attract the aphids much easier, you can start to spray before it happened, and then for uh, early prevention. And hopefully, through these all these organic methods, we can protect the beneficial insects. Just now we say that uh, the ladybugs are very good insects that can eat uh, the pests inside your garden, okay? So by spraying organic pesticide, this organic pesticide won't harm these uh, beneficial insects. You can start to build very good ecosystem in your garden and the ladybugs and other beneficial insects can help to work in your garden too. Okay, let us draw a conclusion over here. We talk about several ways to reduce the effort in organic way. We can grow some beneficial plants like Mexican butterfly weed. And we can do, you, you can do this yourself, the emulsified sunflower oil. And we can do, uh, we can source the metal hyzium and isophilly that atomaceous earth. And we can use something highly effective plant extract-based organic pesticide like this. 
And if you're really interested where you can buy these, you can buy these from Major Garden Center or online platform. All right. All right. Here's the end of my sharing. Now I pass the time to uh, my host, Jess. Okay, thanks Hans for the sharing. So now you may write, if you have any question regarding today's topic, you may write on the comment area and we will, I will read out the question to Hans later. So yep. before that, so before that, remember, if you enjoy the sharing for tonight, welcome to share the, welcome to share our live, FB live to your wall, to your friends, to gardening, to gardening, gardening groups. So that every let more gardening uh, lover can know more regarding the ethic because ethic is really a very headache issue and it's very common happen in our gardens so okay now we go to the first question is okay is the just now hans you got mentioned that the 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 ethic might transmit the virus so yes. is the virus in plants harmful to human if we accidentally con consume the oh usually <laughs> oh usually oh uh, usually won't because as we know that the vi uh, the virus is pretty target specific as well as we know that like something like you know the coronavirus okay it's really target specific to certain kind of species okay it won't uh, transfer to another kind of species. Same for this kind of virus. So if we accidentally consume this virus, it won't infest us. So no worries. Mm, okay. And then can epi survive in soil? Uh yes. Okay. But mm. they but they will it's not what well, we don't call it survive in soil, but they tend to hide on the soil surface. Because sometimes Okay, just now I say that the FAs, they will release a danger signal for their friends, right? And then to let them run away. So one of the hotspots for them to hide is on the soil surface, okay? So just now I mentioned that, okay, uh, when you want to manage the pests, the, the aphids, okay, not only you want to spray on the plant, but you also need to spray on the soil surface as well. If you see there are some aphids on the soil. And how you see there are aphids on the soil usually, okay? You, when you see there are white skin on the soil as well, okay, it means that uh, it tend, it has higher chance that the aphids hide over there, okay? So mm. you need to take note on that, okay? So if we if we notice that there is some um, aphid on the, in the soil, then we could use the same same method that uh, you shared yep. just now? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, is that... If there's a lot of aphid spotted, will it also help to help to attract the good predator comes to visit our gardens? Oh yes, definitely. Then the you good know? predator will stay over and help eat away the aphid. Okay, yes, definitely. Okay. Uh when you see when you see the aphids, okay, and you sometimes you will see the ladybugs and also the ladybugs larvae, the ladybugs children. Okay. So if you think that okay, uh, the 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 plant is okay. Uh, it doesn't affect your living. Okay, you just want to attract more ladybugs. You can just let it, uh, just let it be. Okay, attract more ladybugs. It should be fine. Okay, and this is correct. Uh, but the thing is that if you think that you just want to let the ladybug do the works and then to eat all the effects, effects no. Okay, because you know that just like I say. It, the aphids can reproduce in uh, for one million, uh, one million aphids. Okay, in a week. Okay, so sometimes the the ladybugs cannot reproduce quick enough. They cannot come fast enough, and then to kill all the aphids in one go. Okay, uh, so that's my comment. Oh, uh, okay. So it will determine by the quantity of aphid and how yes, we determine the, uh, that and, the yes. speed. It destroy our plants before the, pre the before the mm, predator to my, comes. To my comment, <laughs> you just, if you think that you just want to use the the, the ladybug to kill them all, probably that the, the time is too late. Okay, this is my comment. Okay, uh, and then for the normal cooking, sunflower oil can be used yes. as the. Uh, yes, but the thing, but the thing is that, according to research, okay, they uh overseas they test with different brands of uh, cooking oil that contain the sunflower oil. It seems that 
the cooking oil which uh, has higher amount of sunflower oil that works better okay so uh, so uh, they also test with the sunflower oil the pure sunflower uh, pure sunflower oil and that give a better effect on the normal cooking oil so it depends on you if you really find it's really hard to uh, to source the pure sunflower oil then you can use the cooking oil that contains the sunflower oil it could work as well for early prevention okay okay so there are a few friends they're sharing that they niche on the soap and neem oil mm -hmm. and then they feel they, they comment that it is work to treat the the epic uh, yes. how, how is okay. your how is your comment Okay, yes, definitely it can be effective on the FA as well. But the thing is that it depends on uh, whether, on how serious the FA infestation. So just like I say that if the FA, the quantity is not that high, just very low, the early stage of FA infestation, this, this could be a good solution, okay? Early prevention is better than cure. But, some but somehow, if we found that the, uh, the FA is like just suddenly burst too much okay burst out too much okay if you just want to spray neem oil uh, mixing with soup at that time probably the the effect okay is uh, still a little bit slow okay so you can use other types like just now we mentioned you can find metahyzum mixed with the uh the the atomaceous earth or you can find the plant extract okay like the effibuster we mentioned just now that could kill uh most of the effects in one go okay this is my suggestion mm. okay does the mr garnet poisonous poisonous to cats and dogs or pets oh no 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 worries uh if you if you are really interested in using mr garnet products okay these uh have been tested in pest uh, free of pesa residue uh, free of heavy metals and also organic certified okay and and should no uh, should not be poisonous to cats and dogs so no worries okay mm. so besides that that's a sharing from k i think she's from uh philippines so yeah. she mentioned that hello natural natural oh. film can be used yes. as trap crops for athletes too but just he, he just she just wondered that whether it's tolerated tolerate with uh malaysian kids or not I know there are some <laughs> nastratum, uh, nastratium, uh, discount plants uh, in Malaysia. Yes, we have. We have discount plant, I, but I'm not sure the species of the nastratium is uh, is uh, what is uh, is the one is the species that used to be uh, trapped the aphids or not. We need to check on that. But we do have this species in Malaysia. Yes. Oh, okay. So can we spray the sunflower oil in the morning or afternoon to avoid sunburn? Yes, uh, definitely. Actually, we actually we spray, especially when we use this kind of oil type pesticides, uh, we just need to avoid the hot afternoon, like between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., okay? Because there's the most heat, okay, come, uh, most heat uh, going to the plant and the residue the oil residue on the plant will tend to get heated okay by the heat okay so avoid sunburn it's better to be early in the morning or uh late uh late afternoon like after 3 p.m 4 p.m is fine okay okay so okay the next question is my chili plants dies infected by aphid and i cut all the leaves now my plants become bota already. <laughs> so can the chili plants regrow again or is recommended to replant with chili seed again? Okay, I suggest like this because I'm not sure that your chili plant uh, being infested by virus or not. Okay, so what I suggest is that, okay, you can apply more fertilizer, which is high in, uh, high, uh, pretty high in nitrogen a little bit. Okay. You or you or you apply compost to your plant, it could be good as well. So after one week or two weeks, you see the new leaves grow. Okay. If the new leaves grow, 
don't have a yellow spot on the leaves, on the new leaves. It means that it's okay. Don't have virus and you can still save your plants. But if you see no leaves coming out or there are yellow spots on the new leaves, okay, it means that there are virus. Okay, then you need to replant uh, your chili plants again. Okay, and there are a few friends they asking about what is the saponin. Oh, okay, the saponin. Saponin is actually a kind, you uh, a kind of uh, substance. Okay, contained inside a plant. Okay, this plant something like a nut. You can find something like saponin nuts, N U T nuts. Okay, this kind of nut, uh, is a natural soap. Okay. Natural soap in the past they used to wash the clothes. So this saponin is actually very good, okay, for uh, dehydrate the pears and then to emulsify the oil, okay. And uh, this is actually a natural substance, okay, from the plant soap base, okay, that you can use to emulsify the oil. Okay, you should be easy. You should find it uh, from online platform. Uh, you just type saponi. You should be able to find it. Mm, okay. There is there any particular types or species of house plant that easily attract aphid? Any specific plants, or majority the plants in Malaysia will. Actually, majority of plants, okay, we but I know, but I do know what kind of plants that won't attract the aphids, okay, like you know, the, uh, you know the leek, okay, the uh the the what the citronella, the pandan, uh, and then also the herbs, okay, those uh these kind of plants won't attract uh the aphid so easily. But other types, like even the leafy vegetables, the chili, the eggplants, uh, the fruit crops, okay? The fruit crop itself can easily attract the aphids, okay? Mm, okay. So if there's no Mexican butterfly plants, but aphids are on other plants in the gardens, will yeah. this attract the ladybug? Yes, definitely. <laughs> as, as, long, as long as there are aphids, okay, these aphids are their favorite, favorite, most favorite food source for them. Okay, that oh. definitely will attract aphids. Uh, no, 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 definitely will attract the ladybugs, okay? So, if, so when you see these, okay, if you are able to trans, if you really want to attract more ladybugs, but you want, don't want it to uh, affect other plants as well, you can just transplant it to far away from your plant area and then uh, start to attract the ladybugs from there on okay oh okay and then there's a few 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 friends they mentioned that they don't like the they don't like the ladybug in the garden so what? i think that i think they might confuse that uh, because as i know there's one a uh, few types of ladybug actually is a is a pest uh, harmful. But, uh, harmful yeah, it's, yeah, pest. yeah. okay Yes. So how could we differentiate whether the the, the ladybug is okay. uh, good or? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Actually. Uh. Jess is correct. Uh. There. Are, uh, there are so many types of ladybugs. There are good one. Okay. Which eat the aphids and also other pests. And there are bad one which eat the leaves. Okay. The bad ladybugs. So how we how we differentiate them? Uh. Just imagine that. Uh. The. The, the the what the good ladybug their shell is so smooth okay and it, I mean. it's yeah it's so reflective to the light you can imagine you use a spotlight to shine uh, to shoot the lady a good ladybug and then the light will reflect black uh, reflect back from the shell okay that one is a good ladybug but when you see the ladybug the shell is the color is so dull okay it's so uh many fur uh like little fur on the shell and that one tends to be a bad ladybug okay mm, okay yes yeah i see the comment yes cucumber uh, they eat cucumber they eat the pumpkins they eat a lot of uh a cooker beets yeah that one is a bad ladybug okay mm, okay 
So can we uh, can we see the aphid easily under the leaf without the microscope? Because just now the picture that you share is mostly yes. is from your mic microscope. You can see it from magnifying glass as well, actually. Or you know, you, you just get... Uh, mm. From eyes? <laughs> from eyes, yes, definitely. You can use your eyes to see. that The aphid is a very, very uh, obvious obvious pest you can just easily see from your eyes okay but you know from the research point of view i need to see like what is their activity what kind of their habits then i just i, I just need the <laughs> microscope to observe their habits you know okay but you can see easily with your eyes okay okay is there any way to buy ladybugs <laughs> uh not in malaysia okay not in malaysia <laughs> oh yet. but in but but in the future, okay, if uh, there is a time, okay, I can show you guys on how to how to rear the ladybugs yourself, okay? But in the future, if I have time, I have a such a topic to talk about this, okay? But right now, there is no, uh, no corporation that produce the ladybugs in a the, in the skillful way. No, not, not yet, not yet. Mm, okay, so do we need to replace the soil if it is badly infested by the uh, aphids? Uh, please send the picture to us because we not because we not sure that whether it's a, a root aphid or root mini bugs or other creatures inside the soil. But let's say if you think, but let's say if you confirm that it's a root aphid, what I can suggest that you can just uh, spray like uh, the plant extract I mentioned just now or the metahyzum I mentioned just now, it should kill the pet, uh, the, the aphids uh, right away inside the soil. But if you but if you still cannot cure these kind of pests, okay, no matter what kind of pest, the best way is really change the soil to a cleaner one, okay? And that one is a fastest way to, to, to reduce the pest for the plant. Mm. So that uh, next question is uh, another similar question. So yeah. if, for example, I was able to eliminate the aphid infestation on my plants, is yeah. there any possibility that it will recur or it will reproduce again? Yes, definitely. But, but, uh, but in manageable way. Okay. So the thing is that after we kill this time, okay. So you don't know after after uh, how many uh, how many hours or how many days or how many weeks okay because the aphids will fly from other places to a place okay and it has the possibility to recur but uh when uh, but when you see again uh, it's easy to manage to get managed okay mm. and that is the is the Okay, so anything if you are unsure, so anytime you could take a picture of your plants and then send send to us because sometimes we, we can see that the different level of uh damage being caused by the caused by the aphid, it might need different level of a uh, 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 solution then to help you to make the plants and healthier and then they can have their own uh own power to Fight back the fight back the environment. So, okay. Then, uh, now is the last question. Is Mr. Garnick Epi pasta suitable for rosemary plants? Because they, I, I used to, I will use the herbs for cooking. Oh yeah, definitely suitable. Okay, for general prevention, if uh for like the aphids, okay, and for other pests, it should be fine. No worries. You can just spray and then uh direct ingest that after you spray it's fine because it's totally organic okay okay then will the epic immune to the to the product which you recommend just now after we spray them for some times okay here's the thing the the chemical parasite will actually use toxic okay to uh to uh to break down to break down the uh the, for example the organs and then to poison them they use poison to 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 kill the aphids okay but whenever we use the poison okay whenever the pests encounter the poison they the pests will tend to have better metabolism okay and then to detoxify the poison and that's how 
the plant, uh, the, sorry, the pests start to get immune. But for the organic pesticide, they use what they call the physical control to, to kill the pest, which means that, let's say, just now I mentioned the oil hair pesticides, whenever you spray on them, it suffocates the nose, but they won't change their nose to become a smaller nose or bigger nose because it's nose, okay? So it just suffocates the nose and that's what we call the physical control. And then like for the good micro and then for the for the microbes to infest them, okay, that's a very nature occurring way. Okay. They cannot alter the behavior of the microbes. Okay, physical control. And just like I say the plant extract, because it control, it control the muscle that cannot just cannot move, okay, and let them don't breathe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that that one is physical control. So organic pesticide control the pest by physical control by affecting their organs, okay, but chemical pesticides uh, use poison and then the poison will, uh, will create the immune system for uh, by, by the pest, okay? Mm, okay, thanks, thanks for the sharing from Hans uh, and... Sorry, yeah. sorry, uh, sorry, I see a lot of questions because mm -hmm. the people say, oh, I could not find saponin. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, so if you really could not find saponin, you can find... Uh, some uh, eco-friendly uh, liquid soap, okay, that could work as well, okay. Okay. But how but about the, there's another friend asking how about baking soda or dishwashing liquid? Uh, baking soda cannot because it's uh, not a good uh, emulsifier. But dishwashing liquid it needs to be eco-friendly as well because uh, sometimes the dishwashing liquid they. Uh, they, they, uh, there are a lot of chemical additives like paraben, like SLS, LTS, and which is not very good for human health. Okay, so find the really pure, eco-friendly uh, liquid soap that that should be fine. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Hans, for the sharing, and hope you all enjoy the sharing for tonight. And thanks again for part, uh, joining us tonight. So just now we got friends asking, asking that where should I send the. Uh, picture if I have any question regarding uh, my gardens, my plants. So welcome to join and uh, follow our Baba Gardening International or Baba Gardening page. So anytime when you have any question regarding your garden, take two pictures from for us. So is this if for from the picture is better for us to diagnose uh, the what happened to the plants so we could give a better suggestion or better solution for you. So the first picture is a close up picture. So that we could clearly see uh, the symptom and what happened to the plants. And then second is uh, take from far, which I can see the whole plants. So that we could uh, know that the condition of the plants at this moment. So we could, uh, uh, we could uh, judge uh, more, uh, we could diagnose more correctly. 